<clears throat> so there's a bias in subsidiarity towards decentralization. Uh, and I think subsidiarity actually arose and the concept arose with the uh, creation of the European Union. And there's many people who are questioning how well it has been applied. <laughs> uh, it's also subsidiarity is, uh, is implicit, not explicit as a concept, but implicit in the, uh, uh, in the federal system where we, we have a bunch of states and there's lots of states' rights in the United States uh, and local, you know, things that are not given to the states but are given to locals. And that's, the concept is not clear. It doesn't say exactly how you're supposed to do it, but it does uh, create a principle to use as a measuring stick and uh, to strive for. Nowadays, there's lots of issues coming up that apply here in the, the global. And it's like atmosphere and ocean, you know, these are obviously global. You can't have local control of the ocean. That's proven to be a disaster. Uh, but we don't have we don't have the capacity for true global governance, uh, and we don't particularly have the capacity for truly democratic, or heaven help us, wise <laughs> wise democratic global governance. So it's a very uh, it's a very controversial realm. But the idea here is you want to say, okay, for exa example, you're, what you're going to be studying as a student. Well, when you are a uh, a uh, young child, the, uh, there should be a lot of influence by your parents. And when you're going to college, it should be heavily influenced by you. And the society can say, well, if you study these things, we're willing to pay you more when you're doing a job and all that. But in terms of dictating what you study, you know, it's like there should be, a, I think there should be a lot more um, personal decision that that can best be decided by the person, although they lack certain perspective. That's why they're getting educated. So other people who are, have more perspective should have some say in it. But it's those, that kind of thinking that you're being, that you're uh, dealing with. You're trying to figure out who is closest to the actual handling of this, uh, this issue, whatever it is, uh, this piece of management for the, you know, the common, the common affairs. Uh, who is closest to it because they're probably going to be best at managing it. But then there's the question of who else is involved and you need to uh, engage them too. The more people are involved, the more scope uh, is involved. So I think of this as a very, uh, if, you, <clears throat> if you can do this well, uh, this is part of uh, a wise democracy because the the closer you put, you create the systems to the people who are actually engaged in those systems, the more rich uh, and speedy the feedback loops are. Uh, and the feedback loops allow for collective learning. Uh, and if you're including everybody who's actually involved, then you can include all of those uh, perspectives. You don't want, uh, it's like human rights. Is that something that you can do at the local level. Uh, so you can have slavery at, in some communities that decide they want slavery and to deprive other people in their midst of being able to participate. Uh, you go, that's a decision if you're doing collective wisdom, you go, no, no, we're gonna have that at the you know, national or international level, uh, assuming we still have nations at the, <laughs> at the point where we are becoming a wise, wise democracy. Uh, but that's the, the idea of subsidiarity. I like both its balance, its sense of balance towards the, uh, the type, the, the, the zone where it can be best handled, knowing, understanding that small is better in that as a general principle, but knowing that often you can get too small in your governance, too local, too personal, uh, and that uh, in order to have wisdom applied. There's lots of other people who are being impacted by your decisions when you're doing personal and local decisions and their voices need to be included also. And for an image, I was thinking of a farmer plowing a field with a, uh, a giant globe in the background. Uh, there's a sense of 
the farmer or what the farmer is planting is kind of the farmer's business and he has a relationship to the soil and you don't want to get too much in the in the way of that um, but that has to be done you know think locally or act, act locally and think globally kind of thing it has to be done with awareness of what is the how is what you're doing in your farming impacting the larger world and how is what's going on in the larger world impacting your farming so playing some image that plays with different scales uh, and a sense of the rightness of the scale that's being represented you know managing things at that scale you need to manage the the farm with both the personal stuff going on with the farmer and his land or her land and the the uh, the global scale also being part of that because there is some impact going on with the farmer uh, what the farmers doing that's my suggestion for a subsidiarity uh, thing it could also be a chart that has you know you know a, a, what do you call them concentric circles you know personal family local state region nation globe whatever there could be something like that too a set of uh, I don't know methodology feels like it doesn't really apply here it's sort of like it's more like uh, equality you know what's a what's a method at a social level that creates equality well you know the laws <laughs> uh, but I know it feels like a, a principle for for weighing things um, for looking at what you're doing and seeing if it, it's the principle or not I don't know <clears throat> method or tool yeah I think there's a there's a saying from the green movement of uh, think globally act locally some people have reversed it people have created the term glocal <laughs> to, to uh, embrace both simultaneously in my image my farmer image is sort of like a, a glocal image uh, but there's a uh, there's a more differentiated complex com concept subsidiarity is kind of a, uh, a more teasing out more levels and dimensions of the global what they're trying to achieve with one word when they say global uh, and it allows for more in-betweenness to it can be networks I mean it could be networks of people it's like the uh, the governance of the web I can and these other institutions that govern the web are neither local nor global they're kind of they're for that realm uh, and the question is in that case should you have experts or and government officials or should you have users governing that uh, again the same principle applies within the network uh, or the business you know so there's a there's a loose even when the when the businesses are trying to decide uh, you have that your suppliers you have your 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 um, customers uh, you have the people who are final users sometimes depending on the business you have retailers as your as your customers but the uh, the end user is there also and you have future generations whatever you're having there's a way in which subsidiarity is a uh, is a governance principle that deals with stakeholders <laughs> you know who are the stakeholders and what role should the different stakeholders have in deciding what's going on uh, in a particular realm mm -hmm. uh, so I, there's a funny way in which subsidiarity is a manifestation of another understanding uh, a broader understanding of you know branching off from wholeness okay Tom great